Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. It is a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kamis Masayeki from the University Heart Center in Bad Krosingen, who is going to present case 64 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. Thank you very much, uh, Manos, for having me. So I want to present you a case where I had to go twice retrograde in an occluded RCA bifurcation. It's a 79-year-old man. As you can see, he has 122 kilogram high BMI. He has a clinical symptomatic CCS2 and new heart free symptomatic and he has a two vessel disease with, a, with a additional LED stenosis. The LV function was 48% with a hypokinesia in the inferior wall. Well, MRI showed us a 25% subintimal enhancement in the inferior basal wall, but the rest was viable. Uh, he had a cardiovascular risk factors, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. Here are the first angios. So I set up for a, a, a double seven French approach uh, from the croins, uh, right and left croin. And as you can see here, we have a long occlusion. And um, here is the ARIO view, but um, yeah, and some different filling patterns. We can't see the bifurcation at the moment, but uh, we had a stomp. Uh, um, at the RCA, which is a little tapering, the calcification is uh, it's a calcified long CTO, about 50 millimeters, and the stump to the PDA, which we can't see here now in the first angio, is both blunt and or functional occluded. It was not clear to m at this moment. So it's a GCTO score free, and we had the collateral morphology, epicardial to the PLA, and septal to the PDA. But it was a lesion on the LED. So my first uh, approach was crosshair 135 and filter XT, and here you can see the calcium. And uh, so when we have a tapered stump, I try to just uh, to, to get in, in into the uh, into the CTO uh, with uh, some tapered polymeric uh, wire. Uh, but here the field XT stocked. So then I choose Gaia 3 because I wanted to navigate uh, the wire in, in the calcium with a high tip load. And uh, that's what I could achieve. So the Gaia went uh, through. But finally, end up here, as you can see, in front of the bifurcation and in supinimal space. So this was the situation where I stop my antigrade approach and I give you also the reasons uh, why I do this. I have a personal algorithm uh, where when I look at the supinimal wire position and I look at the retrograde landing zone and if the landing zone, the retrograde landing zone is uh, smaller than three millimeters and the GCTO score is high, so I, so in my experience, then uh, it's uh, good just to go directly retrograde, which I did here. And even if you have a bifurcation or your vessel is going to be compromised regarding hematoma, you should stop with your antiquated approach. This is uh, so. So um, when I went retrograde first it was septal approach for sure to um, and I had first to stand this uh, uh, LED uh, bifurcation. I also did a kissing to the diagonal and I did a super selective injection down to the uh, septum and I could uh, go with a wire down to the, to the uh, PDA. And I had a Corsair 150 and it was very hard to get this Corsair forward. And finally, there was a very uh, big angle and uh, this occurred me once in epicardial, which, had, uh, which was not nice. But here in the septum, uh, the, pro the prolapse of the, of the uh, Corsair went into, uh, yeah, probably into the right or, or left ventricle. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it was in a, in, in a cavity. So uh, there was no, no perforation regarding uh, uh, and, and no tamponade here, but I had to stop and displace my retrograde approach over this septal collateral. Here you can see the septal, um, which uh, may sometimes create a hematoma, but not in this case. So here we have another uh, retrograde approach for the epicardial. This is a very nice epicardial. It was also very easy to pass, but there was one band which was interesting, but uh, with a C on black, this band straightened up and I could uh, bring the wire rel relatively easily to the PLD system, PL PL system. So here you can see the retrograde wire uh, on, the, on the distal retrograde wire and antigrade wire have kissing wire position. And uh, so my crosshair went down easily and I had a pilot 200. And this pilot was interestingly entering the antigrid crosshair. So I tried a little bit to, to make this uh, TP maneuver because I have the feeling that they are so close together and 
I was successful and uh, so I could bring my anti-grade crosshair down and put a normal wire to the PLD. So this was the tip in and I dilated uh, the PLD and this was the final result after the primary dilatation. What you can see here is that the PDA is still occluded. So, um, and I don't know exactly where to puncture to the PDA. So therefore, I, 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 I did an, another angio. What I have seen was an epicardial ipsilateral collateral from the PL, uh, PL system to the PDA, but uh, it was not really suitable for me. Uh, uh, so, so it's really a, a bailout, uh, epicardial collateral. And um, so what I did is I um, analyzed again more, a distal, more distal septal. Uh, and I did a, I did a, a super selective injection and here you can see a very nice septal collateral connection. So I took once again the CM black and here you can see the CM black. Yeah, it's also tortuous and how it jumps through and enters the, uh, to the PDA. So yeah, I, I put a very tiny band on it like on a, like a gyre and, and so it could make the, the loop and then on, only on rotation uh, without not a lot of pushing the, the wire jumps into the branch. So <clears throat> at this point we have the situation that we have still an occlusion to the, P, uh, to the distal right. So I penetrate this with another pilot and here you can see the pilot entered to an anti-grade uh, guideliner. It was a guideliner assisted externalization and uh, because there was tension on the system I trapped the balloon the guide, the, 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 the Corsair during my externalization, so I externalized, uh, externalized with RG3 so that, that I don't lose the, the, the retrograde microcatheter. So uh, the rest of the story is only the stenting, which took also a little bit of time because I had to do a culotte stenting, but finally I think uh, the result was very nice. So I stented the LED, I stented the bifurcation, I could uh, secure all the branches, and this is what, what we should achieve. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, that's a very impressive uh, case, Makamis. Thank you very much. I guess a couple, couple of uh, questions and points. The first one is that it's important to maintain both branches. I mean, you clearly have very large branches here. Both the PLV and the PDA are very large. One question that comes up is you did double retrograde, but the first one was essentially two to true entry. The second one looks like you did a, a guideline reverse card. So were there, were there some minimal planes down there that you had to deal with and do high pressure balloons? How did you prevent the stands from causing flaps of tissue going including the one of the branches or not so what i did is um, I, I, I i first i put stands um, approximately 10 millimeters uh, in front of the bifurcation so i didn't overstand the bifurcation so i so it was not necessary to puncture into the stand and then i did uh, 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 yeah uh, uh, another reverse card with an angioplasty of the balloon and entered the pilot 200 and that, that that's that was it yeah okay and then it was 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 easy and then i had to do a culotte and for the bifurcation and, and finish the case so yeah perfect and so the other another interesting thing here is you have the combination you did the septal for one the pda and the epicardial for the plv now you had the prolapse and it looks like a small hematoma but nothing nothing major when do you worry if you have a prolapse into a septal branch what, what, when do you do and when do you get concerned about this causing hematoma something bigger than what happened here? So I mean, uh, to be honest, it, it, it may happen. Uh, so we ha I also did an echocardiography on the table and, uh, um, and uh, then from the time when it happened till I finished the case, it took me again uh, one hour approximately. I did another uh, echo uh, to, to, uh, to see if there is the hematoma growing. So there is a potential uh, risk that uh, that this kind of hematoma grows and make big septal compression. So, uh, but unfortunately in this case um, there was no complication at all. So, um, I, I at the moment I'm not sure, uh, Manus, uh, which uh, uh, morphology with which anatomy causes more uh, uh, septal hematoma and which less. So, Perfect. it's unclear at the moment. I think. Perfect. So again, very, very good way. Being cautious is a better way. Look at it with ultrasound, with like echocardiogram, and then again at the end, and look pretty good. But again, uh, congratulations for a phenomenal case and showing the importance of opening both branches of the bifurcation so you get as complete revascularization as possible. Thank you very much, Camus. Thanks.